What's up guys? So today I'm going to be showing you how to install a S-Bus receiver and bind it with your radio. In my case, I'm using an X4R SB, so that's S-Bus, with my FreeSky Tyrannus. So you're going to need your receiver, your S-Bus cable that comes with your Vortex, your radio of course, your hex screws, uh, screwdrivers, sorry, a pair of goggles to, or a monitor to be able to do the setup, and a proper mover tool. So always remember when you're pairing, binding, screwing with any settings, take off your props. Always do that. It should always be the first thing, just in case, because if you're sitting here playing with something and a prop spins up, you'll lose a finger. I actually saw a guy on Facebook, Luke got seven stitches because he was trying to bind a receiver and he didn't take his props off. So just be careful. I don't want to see anyone getting hurt out there. And the last thing you're going to need is a battery to turn it on. So the first thing you got to do, props off. Second thing is you're going to start taking out some screws. So I already took out all the ones you need to take out. So you're going to need to remove the three here, the three here. There's four on each side on the side panels. So two on the top, two on the bottom, and then on the other side, two on the top, two on the bottom. I took out four on one side and then the two on the bottom on the other so that way I can lift the panel up and actually have a view on one side. So after you get all your screws out, you're going to do the first step, which is very simple, is pull out the rubber stopper that is in the receiver spot right up here. So when your PPM cable is sticking out, just pull that out and then the second step is to take out your PPM cable. So it's literally... That's it, just pop it out. And now the next thing you're gonna need to do is take your S-Bus cable, which I already have attached to the X4R. So if you look at the X4R, just so you know which pins to put it on, on the side that has the fail safe button, which I have right here, you're gonna take that and you're gonna pop it right on the bottom three pins. So the fail safe button's right here, bottom three pins on the left hand side. So on the right, you're going to have black. In the middle, you're going to have red. And closest to the edge with the failsafe button, you're going to have white. Make sure you get it in that order. And then the next step is to mount it where you're going to want to have it. In my case, I'm mounting it inside. So it wouldn't fit very snugly if I had the if I had the cardboard wrapping that came with it. So I actually took it out of that and wrapped it with electrical tape so that way nothing would short out inside there. So my antennas are sticking out here so that way I can have it sticking out of the back of the quad so I can get a good signal. So what I'm gonna do now is connect the PPM, um, excuse me, the S-Bus connector and the difference between how this connects and how the PPM connector connects is it actually doesn't go into the same port right underneath the receiver slot. The port that it goes into, I know this is going to be very difficult to see here, but inside the side panel, if you're looking at the front on the left hand side here, if I can get this to focus, toward the back here on the upper board above the power distribution board, you're going to see one connector right in there, that little beige thing, that's the connector that this has to go into. So what you're going to need to do is if you take out all the screws that I showed you, sorry, let me just angle this down a little bit better so you guys can get a good view. What you're gonna need to do here is lift this up a little bit. So that way you can get a good angle. And I remember this was the most tedious part, unless you actually remove the whole top, which I don't feel like doing. So just go ahead and pop the PP, the, I keep saying that, the S-Bus connector. Okay, so it's in. It only took me a minute or so, but it's a pain in the ass to get in. And I'm actually going to keep the receiver out of the drone for now because we still need to do the binding. So once you have that connector in, the next step is to do the binding and setting up the model on your radio. So what you're going to need to do... Welcome to OpenTX. move over here to the Tyrannus. Okay, so once you get here, you're going to go and you're going to go to Menu. Then you're going to go down to a new model, and then you're going to hit enter, hold, and then right here where it says create model, hit enter. Loading model, so you're going to be met here with four choices, and since we're using a multi-rotor, we're going to go over here to multi-rotor and hit enter. 
and then assign throttle to channel one. So what you can do here, which I learned in another video, is you can hit page, 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 page. So that's gonna be all of these. So throttle's channel one, roll is channel two, pitch is channel three, and yaw is channel four. So that's all correct. So enter long to confirm, which it says right down here. Just hold it. And then it's gonna be labeled model two. So in here, you can set your switches and stuff later. I'm just using this to bind. So right here, you're gonna hit page. And then plus will bring you down to the bottom. And you're gonna go up here. Make sure this is in mode D16, down channels one through eight. And right here, you're gonna go to bind. So then when you hit bind, you'll hear that, that annoying chirp that will never stop and it will haunt your dreams, but you're gonna hear that. Then the next step is to move over, I'm gonna move this out of the way actually, just keep it sticking up over here. The next step, is to come over to your vortex, and what you're gonna need to do is hold the fail safe button, which is the little dot, on the, on the receiver. Let's see if I can make a good video of this right here. So on the receiver itself, on one of the sides, that little silver dot, you're gonna have to hold that while you power on the vortex. So, I'm just using my finger actually, and let me uncap my battery. So, as you're going to connect, just hold the button down and connect. Okay, so the LED light is flashing. And right here, I'm just going to connect my goggles. Okay, I believe it has bound, so we can go ahead and hit enter. And then here, if you're changing from PPM or redoing, you're going to have to go through the setup once it's been bound. So then just go ahead and hold the reset button on the back. So while you restart your drone, just hold the button. So on the LED board in the back, in the top left corner, there's the reset button. So you're gonna have to go ahead and hold that while you plug your drone back in. So just plug it in while you're holding that. That really gets annoying sometimes. So just go ahead and hold the reset button. I guess I wasn't holding it. Okay, so it's detecting RX right now. So it's detecting the receiver. Ensure that TX is on and receiver is bound. So right now the receiver is not bound. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna power cycle this again. Oh, now we go, okay, so it did bind. Sorry, I guess it just took a second. So right now we're flashing here. And then on the goggles, just going through the wizard, so center all controls. So I'm actually gonna put on my goggles right now while we walk through this. So center all controls, just trying to be like a blind man here. So bring this throttle up to center. Soon I'll be getting a DVR, so you'll be able to see what I'm actually looking at. So move roll control left and hold, so bring that over, return all controls to neutral, move yaw control left and hold, return all controls to neutral, move throttle to min and hold, so that's throttle, return all controls to neutral, move pitch stick back, which is the right stick, and hold, return controls to neutral, left stick back and left, so back and left, Return all controls to neutral. Level quad, move right stick back and hold. So I'm just gonna look and make sure the quad isn't on anything and it's not. So move right stick back and hold. And where's the song? I know it's gonna play, there it is.
Okay, so now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and hit back on my Tyrannus. Okay. Just go ahead and hit exit, exit. So model two I'm on. And then on my goggles, I just wanna make sure that it will start up. So to arm is down and to the right. So as you can see, the motors all start up. Now I'm just gonna to check to make sure all the channels are correct. So if I move the pitch forward, the front two engines should slow down and the back two should speed up. That's correct. Reverse is right. All right, and yaw is working correctly. Okay, I just wanna make sure that it will get into the OSD. Okay. So right now, if you are using a free sky Tyrannus like I am, I'm just gonna keep that throttle up because that will drive me insane. If you're going to keep the FR sky Tyrannus and use it, what you're gonna to need to do is you're actually gonna to need to set the endpoints in your your model to actually let the quad recognize. Sorry about that cut, guys. Uh, my memory card on my camera actually got full, so I had to figure out what was wrong with it before I could continue shooting, so now we're back. So as I was saying before, what we're gonna to need to do is do some changes to the model here on the Tyrannus. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is make it so you guys can see it. Okay, so once you get your receiver bound, the next thing you're gonna to need to do is set up so a little more details in the model. So I already named it Vortex A because if we go here to menu, we'll see, oops, did not mean to hold that. If we go to menu, you'll see I have Vortex and then Vortex A. So Vortex A is just the one I'm making for this video. So once we do that, you're gonna go ahead and hit page. If you want to name it, you can type it in there. Hit page again, twice, three times four times. So right here, you're gonna to get to Mixer. When you get here, your channel five is gonna be blank. So if you wanna set the flight mode switch, go down to channel five, hold enter, then hit edit. Then once you get to this page, you can name it if you want, I didn't. So right on here, on the source, which is the second button, just hit the minus sign to get down, hit enter. And then I have it set to switch C, so all you need to do is move the switch. So if I want it on switch A, just flip switch A. B, if I want it on the knob, I can move S1, but I want it on switch C, so I'm just gonna move S1 back to normal. And then just move switch C right here. So right here you see it registered as switch C, so just hit enter. Then you're gonna hit exit, exit, and then page. Right here, you're gonna to get to outputs. So the next thing you need to do to get the Vortex to recognize that you're trying to enter the flight menu or something like that on the OSD, you're gonna to need to change your outputs so that way it gets to the right endpoints when you're saying throttle down and to the right, and uh, down to the left, sorry, and you want to open the OSD, it won't recognize it right away. So you need to change your outputs on the Tyrannus with the X4R, I don't know if it changes from receiver to receiver or from transmitter to transmitter. I'm not sure, but I know for the Tyrannus and the X4R using SBUS, you're gonna to need to change the values from negative 100 to 100 for, to the values negative 97.8 to positive 97.8. So you're gonna do that here by hitting enter, then hit minus, and go here and then hit enter, and then just up, keep pressing up until you get to 97.8, then hit enter, then hit minus to go over to the next value, hit enter, bring this down to 97.8, and you're gonna do this for channels one through four, not channel five, channel five is just your flight modes, so the Tyrannus will recognize that, and then right here, hit exit, and then you're gonna go down to channel two and do the same. Okay, so once you get all of your values set here, just to check if you can get into the OSD, just hold the throttle down into the left. And as you hear the vortex beeping, you can hear me going through the menu. So that means that our channels are recognized. So we can go ahead and exit the menu by just backing out of it. And that's it, your vortex is now paired to the SBUS receiver. We have our Tyrannus set up. The only thing left to do, we can actually turn both of these off now. 
So just disconnect your battery. The only steps we have left now, which in my opinion are the easiest, but just a little time consuming, is to mount the receiver on the inside, uh, fix the antennas in the way you want, and then put your screws back and you're done. So what we're gonna do here is if you want to mount this inside like I do, which I strongly recommend because if you hit a, sh a hard crash or something happens and your receiver is on the outside, you might break it, might fall off, could fall off in flight if you don't secure it well enough. A million different things could happen. And in my opinion and the reason that I do it is if you put it inside, your drone just looks cooler. So what you need to do is right here, lift up the top a little bit. Just if you can, squeeze it in. Just make sure your cable's inside, and if it sits right, just wiggle it around a little bit, get your antennas in the right position, and then if it'll close all correctly, which it should with not too much hassle. So if you push down the top, if it closes, you're good. Then just start putting screws in just to hold it down. It will be a little tighter than normal because it's not really meant to have that in there. It just looks nice. So once you get a screw in to hold it down, you're basically done. And then just one more time, if before you put all your screws back in, make sure that your Tyrannus recognizes and everything Welcome is working. So turn your Tyrannus on, connect your battery. So just check if it arms. All right, check if it enters the OSD, enters the OSD. So all our connections are good, we're bound, and our receiver's mounted inside, and I'm sure you guys don't wanna see me just reassemble it, which takes all of five minutes. So I know a lot of people are having problems with this, so I hope this video helps. If you guys have any other things you wanna see me do, drop a comment, send me a PM, join the Facebook groups. Um, I'll put links to them in the description. I'm really active in them. So if you guys have questions, you can always DM me. And if, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Look out for more flight videos. I actually did a flight today. Um, I've actually been pretty new to racing, so or racing drones, rather. So I'm trying to get more into more intense flights. So the first time, if you looked at my maiden flight video, link here. Uh, pretty basic, you know, I did a couple flips and stuff. Second flight, same thing, just kind of cruising around. There was at an old high school of mine, there's kind of like an opening between some trees, like in a tree line, so I kind of tried flying through that a few times. Went pretty well. I actually had my friend film with uh, my Rebel T5i, which is actually what's filming this. So I'll be editing a video of that tonight, probably along when I'm editing this, which, oh boy, that'll be fun. But subscribe, drop a like. I'm gonna be doing a giveaway at 25 subscribers that will give away a pair of props. Or if you guys don't want props, I have a 3D printer, so I can give away a set of skid plates. I can give away a GoPro case, which is actually being printed on my printer right now. Or if you guys just have something you want me to print, you can drop me the Thingiverse link, and I'll print that out for you. You know, something nice, just a little giveaway to help boost my channel. So that's it, guys. Like I said, like, comment, subscribe, join the Facebook groups, keep in touch. Anything, any questions you have, you know where to find me. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.